Lord, we thank you so much for your love tonight. We thank you for your presence tonight. We thank you, Lord, that um, we can gather together in unity. We can gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And that your love is, is tangible here. That your love and your presence is here. Your peace is here with us, Father. And Lord, we thank you that as the days get closer for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to return, Lord, I thank you that we're becoming more and more like Him. Hallelujah. We're becoming more and more like heaven. Hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you that we can trust, that we can rest in you, Father God, and in your Word. And I thank you that the Holy Spirit says tonight what, you, what He needs to say, does what He needs to do tonight, Lord. Our hearts are yielded to You. Like we said before, we give You our lives, Lord. We want to do Your will, Your plan, Your purpose, Father. And I thank You that the Holy Spirit just hovers in this place tonight, Lord. I thank You for the supernatural. I thank You, Father God, for the unity of Christ in this place tonight, Lord. And I thank you that we rule and we reign on earth. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you. You can be seated. Praise God. Thank you, praise and worship team. We love you guys. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hey, bro. Praise God, man. I love you, Bonner. I love you guys, too. Everybody else as well. Amen. (laughs) You know how powerful the name of Jesus is? Super powerful, man. I mean, you think about it. I know, I know some of you probably do this quite often, but maybe, um, but, but if you don't, something to think about, man, when you, when you, you know, how you're out and about and just kind of moving around and around town or whatever you're doing, whoever you're around, when you, when you, when you bless them, just say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Try that. <laughs> You'd be surprised at the way people's faces get, man. <laughs> some will be happy, some will won't know what to say, some will step back. You know, you'll you'll have all kinds of different responses, but just I bless you in the name of Jesus. Because usually we'll say like, hey, God bless. You know, I say that a lot. God bless, God bless you, man, or whatever. You know, and try to say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. It's powerful, man. Jesus hears that and he's just he's there. Amen. Hey man, turn over to Ephesians chapter four. Um, I don't, I mean, I, 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 uh, I'm the kind of person that, and a lot of you know me well enough that, you know, um, that I, I, uh, I take, I've learned over the years from, from ministering from the pulpit and, and being, uh, you know, God giving me the responsibility of, uh, being a pastor and praying for the church and, and, uh, just being, you know, the best I can like Jesus (laughs) on a daily basis and, Working through all the different things in life that we deal with, you know, uh, pressures, fears, different things that come along, come down the pike. You know, suddenlies that happen in our life sometimes are good, sometimes they're not good. You know, and we, we, we learn lessons as we go on in life and, and as we walk through life. And, and some of you have learned a lot more lessons than I have, and I'm, I'm trying to catch you, but I probably won't because you're older and you just, you just know more. You know what I mean? But, uh, <clears throat> but... We go through life, and we just kind of, you know, things happen, but I've learned that, you know, while, when I'm up here, I don't, I, I don't want to uh, necessarily just preach what I feel like preaching or talk about what I feel like talking about. Um, I, I, I got to let the Lord orchestrate it, because, um, you know, a lot of us, we, we want to do the will of the Lord. We want to we wanna say what He wants us to say. We want to go where He wants us to go. We want to be sensitive, and... And we get taught that a lot here, and a lot of us are real sensitive to His voice and, and His leading and direction. And, and um, So tonight, what I'm going to share, what I feel like the Lord's leading me to share tonight, um, it's good, it's just, I don't know how long it's going to take. It might be really short, it might be a little bit longer, I don't know, but I just want to do what God wants me to do, and then uh, uh, when it's over, it's over. Okay, does that make sense? And I've just asked the Lord, and I, like I do every time, Lord, as I open my mouth, just fill it. You know what I mean? And so uh, <clears throat> I, I kind of heard a little bit. Who was here this morning? Good. I wasn't here this morning, um, but I did hear a little bit about the message today, and I heard it was kind of one of those ones that kind of hit you right between the eyeballs, you know? And uh, I heard it was kind of a, a good corrective message, and, and, I, and Dad was telling me about it on the phone. I said, so it wasn't one of those ones that everyone was swinging from the chandeliers about. And he said, well, 
He said, if, if they understood what I was talking about, they'd be swinging from the chandeliers. You know? So you could look at it that way, I guess, you know. <laughs> so praise the Lord. I'm going to have to go back and uh, listen this morning. My son had a, had a thing he had to be at this morning that we we're together, and, and it's fun hanging out with my son. I love it. Amen? Amen. So <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, let's look here at verse 1. It says, uh, <clears throat> I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Say, I'm called. I'm called. I'm called. I'm called. Say it again. I'm called, I'm called. To, do to do the will, the will. of the Father. the Father. Amen. Verse 2. With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love endeavoring, verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. Now, I'm going to stop here after these first three verses here and just kind of hit on this for just a second because um, a lot of you will probably agree with me in this area as far as um, our love walks with people and maybe family members or uh, maybe uh, other other brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, all of us have that. All of us have that person that we think's annoying in our life. <laughs> Don't give me the holy Madeira look, y'all. Come on. All of us have that one person or persons we just get annoyed by sometimes. Come on, people. Amen. And guess what? You annoy others as well sometimes. I'm sure you're probably that person in someone else's life. <laughs> Yeah. No, okay, okay. Well, anyways, well, Linda, I can't say that we're in church, but anyways, uh, no, I'm just kidding. But, but we all, you know, we have that. Now, here's the deal. <clears throat> the Lord, over the years, has, that's one of the things he's dealt with me about is, you know, my heart attitude towards, towards others and towards people. And that's one of the major things he dealt with me about uh, back in 2008, right before 2008, uh, when I, when I was going through that leukemia stuff, that was one of the things he really dealt with me about was my love walk and my attitude uh, towards other people, believers or non-believers, okay, just people in general, okay? And um, so I've learned that if I want to have peace in my life, I've got to walk in love with people. Whether they like me or they don't like me, whether I know for a fact they're sticking the sword in my back when I'm not around, and then in front of me there are rosies and posies, you know what I mean? Whether or not, none of that, that does not, in God's mind, that doesn't even matter. He doesn't even think that way. Well, they don't like me, or they, you know, I'm sure it hurts God's heart when people are against him, and they turn, turn their back on him or whatever. I'm sure it does, because he loves people. And it should hurt us to a point, but it should hurt us, not for our pride, it shouldn't hurt our pride. It should hurt us because they're hurting themselves and we feel sorry for them because of that. Or we, or, or we, we hurt because of that. You know, my son today, you know, he, he, we, we had a good, he, he learned a good lesson. I mean, he knew this lesson, but he was able to exercise this lesson today. And it was really cool. There's a, a young man he ran into and, and he just, he, he's known this young man for a while and, and uh, he, he greeted him and asked him, say, what's up? How you doing? Hi, kids. What's up, man? You know, or whatever, how they talk. And, and he said the kid just kind of just nodded his head and walked by him. And it was another, another uh, Madera kid, you know, a kid that he knows. And, um, and he told me about that. And I said, well, what'd you do? And he said, oh, I just greeted him and I kept my heart right. And, and, and the way he treated me, it's, it's not on me. It's, it's on him and it's just hurting him, you know. And I thought, man, I didn't know you even knew that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, man, that just convicted me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, good job, Shane. But, but it, really, it really hurts the other person when they treat you a certain way if it's something that's wrong. And our job, and man, sometimes I know it's tough sometimes. I mean, you know, sometimes you just, it's like, okay, God, you got to give me a, an hour here to pray because I need to pray so I can love them first. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's like, it's like, you know, you just want to, you know, but, but I've learned that if I'll stop and not let my mind run wild, if somebody offends me or if I find out something or something happens or something's done to me or fam- my family or somebody I love or whatever, 
if I'll stop for a moment and not let my mind run wild because my mind will run wild. I mean, I'll have thoughts that are not of God at all. You know what I mean? And I've learned, and my wife can, can attest to this, she can, she, can, she can say that I've learned how to stop and just say, wait a minute, I cannot go that direction in my mind. I've got to love this person, man. I've got to keep my heart right towards this person. And I'll tell you, when you make that decision, it gets easier and easier. It really does. Because you look inside and you see where they're coming from. Some folks just have no clue what the love of God is. I, there was a time in my life I had no clue what the love of God was. And, I, and I've been in church my whole life. I knew God loved me, but I didn't know how to love like God loves. Two different, that's, that's two different things. We can love somebody, uncon, you know, we can love somebody with condition, because of conditions. Oh, I love this person because they hook me up every Friday with free hamburgers. And, oh, yeah, I just love this person. They give me free this, free that. But then when the free, free stuff stops, it's like, you know, people, that's, you know, you know, you know, there's a difference between the love of God and just loving somebody because they hook you up or they, you know, treat you well. It's two different things. And I know a lot of us are sitting here going, Pastor Mike, we know this, and we do know this, but let me tell you something. If you want to, what we talked about earlier about being in the will of the Lord and doing the will of God, then the will of God is to love others. You know, and I've been telling myself this all week, seeing all this craziness that's going on in our world and just this goofy stuff that just doesn't make any sense at all. And I'm sitting there and I'm going, you know what? I got to get my eyes off this stuff because Jesus told us to do two things. Love the Lord God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself, period. Doesn't mean you got to like their actions. Doesn't mean you got to stand for what they stand for. Doesn't mean you got to agree with, with the demons that are ruling their mind. Doesn't mean any of that. You just keep a heart of love towards them. Did you know that you can, if you had to, protect your home, protect your family, protect your kids, and hurt somebody to do that and still love that person if you had to? This is crazy, I know. It sounds crazy. But what I'm saying tonight is condition your heart to have the heart of God towards people. And that's something that you, yourself, by yourself, between you and God, you've got to get before God. If you need help in that, you've got to get before Him and say, God, I need the baptism of your love. I need you to show me how to love others, how to walk in love. Show me how you see others or see this situation, Lord, because I want to line up with your heart in this situation. I don't, I mean, there's been tons of times where I've, I've heard things or, or, you know, Monica would say something like, this person, man, they, this is how they treated me or whatever. And my first thought was, if I ever see those people I'm gonna let them have it that's my first thought your emotions your flesh you want to react out of revenge you know I'm Irish and German I'll fight you and then I'll torture you <laughs> I'll snap and go at you and then when I get at you I'll torture you you know what I mean <laughs> Come out of him in Jesus' name. No, I won't do that, but, you know, it's just a joke. That's Everybody's laughing. That's why I said it, so everybody can laugh, you know. But, but see, our heart conditioned, condition needs to be conditioned by the love of the Lord. And so it talks about here, when, when you want to be in the will of God, when you want to do that, you've got to walk in love. That, that's the first thing you've got to do. That's the first thing you've got to be baptized in is the love of God. Because your life is, is, you're gifted by God for certain gifts here on this earth. You're equipped by God for certain things here on this earth. And he wants you to be led by him to accomplish those things through him. But the more that you have his love, the more he'll be able to use you in areas. Because he'll trust you with people's minds and hearts. Because... Everybody is in a different position in life, maturity-wise, spiritually-wise, naturally-wise. We're all at different levels. We all have strong, strong points. We all have weaknesses. 
You're stronger in areas than I am. I'm stronger in areas than you are. We're all different. Thank God we're not all the thumb. You know what I mean? Thank God we're all different. God's called us to the same love, but he's called us with different things. So, so he's saying, and I know this, and they, mom and dad kind of touched on this a little bit tonight before we got in, over into this message here, but they touched, they touched on the will of God and surrendering to God. And the way that you grow the most, and we'll get to it here in a minute, the way you will grow the most spiritually is your love walk. Where's your love walk at? Where's your love walk? Because I'm going to tell you right now, that person out there that's doing drugs, that's drinking alcohol, that's, that's living in a gang life or just into whatever that's not right, that's hurting him, if they really knew the truth, they wouldn't do it. If they ex- if have experienced what we've experienced, the love of God, they wouldn't do that. And... um. That's why I said before what I said earlier about when you bless people, bless them in the name of Jesus. I mean, you don't have to do that. I'm just saying, bless them because that name, there's something about that name. That it releases power because of his blood that he shed. It releases power in people's lives. It's not just Jesus. I mean, it's Jesus. You know, I had a vision, I had a, I had a vision, not an open vision, but a vision here just a couple weeks ago when I was praying, laying there, just soaking in His presence, I had my eyes closed, and all of a sudden I saw this cloud, and I saw Jesus rise up out of this cloud. You'll like this one. I saw Jesus rise up out of this cloud, and He was looking at me, and all of a sudden He just went like this and flexed. <laughs> and I thought, wow, I mean, you know, you're just like, that's Jesus, He's flexing at me. You know what I mean? He's just smiling and He's flexing at me. And he's just showing me, like, Mike, I'm strong enough. I'm big enough. I'll take care of this. Or he could have just been having fun with me. I don't know. But, you know, guys will do that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> I don't do it anymore because I have nothing to flex. I'm just flab. But, 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 you know, I'm just like, or I'm like, are you trying to show me up, God, Jesus? You know what I mean? Like, making fun of me? But he's strong enough. He's big enough to take care of those situations. Now, it says in verse 4, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. As Tom Terry said, Paul must have been from southern Jerusalem. In you all. Amen? Verse 7, But to each one of of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Yeah. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. Now, not everybody will operate in those offices and those gifts. Not everybody will. But that doesn't mean that you're any less of a Christian. It doesn't mean you're any less of the part of the body. That doesn't mean that you're the bottom of the foot. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that. We've all been called to do the work of the ministry. We've all been called to be disciples. And the Bible says we are called to be evangelists. To to always be ready in season and out of season. Ready to preach the truth. Deliver the gospel. Deliver the love of the Lord. That's our ministry. Amen. I don't. I know God's set me in this gift of pastor right now. In the office of pastor. I responded to that as a 20 year old uh, kid. I responded to that. And I understood that. And I, I started going that direction seeking him finding out what he wanted me to do he's brought me to this point and I have an understanding of that praise God but see without you I can't do what I do and without me you can't do what you do we're joined together now God will put a certain 
uh, people, as a pastor, God will put a certain people group or certain uh, people in your life to lead, to love, to help when they need help, to pray, to do whatever. He does that. He uses me for that in a lot of your lives. Amen. But he also uses you to pray for me, to bless me, to help me, to, to be there if I need something. Or like that. So we all, we're all knitted together in one. Amen. And it goes the same way. Now, now God will put a certain group of people in your life, but also, just like we're here right now, there's believers in New Jersey that we're knitted together and in love with because we're in the bond of peace in Christ together. Okay, so, so we're all one. We're the church, praise God. We're to love one another. We're to bless one another. Whether we believe the way they believe, whether they operate in what we operate in, it doesn't matter. We're all centered around Christ. And we're to love one another. Jealousy is one of the biggest things in the body of Christ that just destroy people. Jealousy and pride. Huge. If the devil can get you over into pride or get you over into jealousy concerning your walk with Christ or with some other believer or, or some other deal, I mean, he's going to do some damage to you. And I'll tell you, I'll just be honest with you. I don't know about you, but one of the things the devil tries doing in my life is he tries to get me jealous or envy over certain things that goes on in the body of Christ. Well, this person over there, how in the heck can that happen to that person? You know, when you start looking through your natural eyes, which don't know the whole story or the whole truth about the matter. Amen. But see, it's not about comparing yourself to somebody else or trying to be like somebody else, or having what somebody else has. Yeah. It's about you just coming before the Lord, being a disciple, digging in the Word, getting the truth, understanding the truth, so the truth can keep you free. Yeah. <laughs> As you walk down the pathway that God's provided for you to walk down. The pathway that God's called you to walk down. Guys, it's so true. Dad preached on that about a week or two ago. About the only way you're going to know the truth is if you, uh, the only way you're going to get set free is if you know the truth. If you know the truth. And we get set free by the blood of Jesus. Praise God when we give our life to Him. Thank you, Lord. But then that's the start of the growing process. It's just like a child, man. They're born. Okay, here's the start of the growing process. Now you got to you know, feed them milk, and then as they get older, you can get to solid food, and you can move on. It's just a growing process. They learn more, they learn more, they grow more. you got to buy bigger shoes and bigger pants. How many of y'all have been there before with the kids, you know? So it's a growing process, and our love walk is a growing process. I can honestly stand here and say that I love people more than I did last year now. I've let them work with me in that because, you know, it's... It, I understand that if I'm going to be effective here on earth and bless others and help others and be effective for the kingdom of God, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to need to grow in my love walk. I'm going to need to learn uh, what it is about the bond of peace, what it is about unity, how, how do we flow. Now, this is, this, is going to get a, this is going to take another step up here. How do we flow in unity in the Spirit together? You stay in love, you'll flow in the Spirit. You walk in love, you'll flow in the Spirit. Right. You will. Right. You'll start hearing God stronger. You'll start knowing things. Your knower will know things more. Hallelujah. You'll start understanding some things of the Word of God. You'll wake up one morning and this scripture that you've been reading 30,000 times the last five years will dawn on you and you'll see something out of that that will set you free, man. Yeah. That's how the Word works. Yeah. That's how the Word works, praise God. Hallelujah. So, verse 12. So it says here that, that he set some, uh, gave some uh, to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And verse 12 says, it says, let me read here. Let me get that out. Okay. So it says here, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now listen to verse 13 here. I'm going to read verse 13 out of the Amplified. Until we all reach oneness in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, growing spiritually to become a mature believer. 
a mature believer. As a pastor in this church, it's my job to become a mature believer, but it's also my job, ordained by God, to help us become mature believers. And I believe that's what happened this morning from just kind of understanding the message that the Holy Spirit had you preach this morning was kind of one of those deals where it's time to be a mature believer. Now, a lot of us have been believers for a long time in this place. I know I'm almost everybody pretty well in here, and you've been a believer for a while. Maybe some of you have been a believer for a short time. If you've been a believer for a short time, keep your nose in the Word, spend time with the Father, and become mature as fast as you can. Yeah. Grow in the kingdom. Yeah. A lot of us are mature Christians in this place. A lot of you I would trust with spiritual things. I would trust uh, with, with you know, just different things concerning the word of the Lord and the gifts and things like that. But that doesn't mean we're fully mature yet. <laughs> he wants us to grow more in the maturity of Him. Huh? We're all still growing, yes. Amen. That should be a goal of yours. You know, we like to be, we like to be good and at certain things we do on here on earth. Maybe your job, you like to be good at that job or that task or whatever it is. You take pride in that. You, you, you like doing that. You're a part of that. You're part of that craft or whatever that is. You know, that's the same thing with the Lord. We should want to grow and become more mature as the weeks and days and years and months go by, becoming a mature believer so we can help people that are struggling in certain areas. There was a time where, in my life, where if somebody that was demonized came to me, I didn't quite sure how to handle that situation. But I figured, and this has been a while back, but I figured now that I better learn how to deal with people that are demonized, if I need to, as a pastor. You know, how do I do that? What do, what do, you know, there, there's, there's certain ways, and the Bible talks about how Jesus... Would, would, would cast devils out of people, and then, and then you hear stories from other believers that are experiencing that, that God uses, or they've dealt with those kind of situations. And I figured I better mature in some of those areas, because if I'm a pastor, I'm probably going to need that. And guess what? I have needed that over the years. Yeah. There's been time. And why? Not because you can say, oh, I casted out devils. That has nothing to do with it. What's your name, devil? You know, and asking the devil all these stupid questions. Jesus, Jesus said, come out. That's what he said. He didn't ask, where are you from, when were you born, and all this stupid stuff. What's your father's brother's name? You know, and all this, some of these dumb things these guys do, I don't understand. It's just stupid. Jesus said, come out. You know, and it's, it's our job to help people get free. Yeah. We know the truth. It set us free. Want to be, and I just listened to Brother, Brother Kenneth E. Hagin preach on this just the other day. I've listened to it twice. The message was called Born to Raise Hell. R-A-Z-E. R-A-Z-E hell. That word R-A-Z-E raise means to demolish or to destroy. We're born to raise hell. We're born to demolish and destroy the kingdom of darkness that used to be in our life until we got born again and set free. Now it's our job to run with that mantle, to run with that freedom, to run with that truth and that blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God. We're to run with that and to destroy the works of darkness in other people's lives. Now I know that I know that I know that not everybody will allow you to do that. I understand that. And Jesus had, had a word on that too. He said, put your shoes on, dust your feet off, and move on down the road. Because you can't help everybody. You'll never be able to help everybody. Some people will say they want help, but they, they really don't want help. You're going to run into those kind of people too. Some people you're going to run into, they're going to fall at your feet and beg you for help, and you're going to be able to help them. Some people you're going to look at and think, man, I sure could help them, and you want to help them, and you'll go to help them, and you'll think it's God, and they'll say, no, I don't need help. So you have all these different scenarios that happen in our lives concerning that. But we need to be mature in love. We need to really get an understanding of what the love of the Lord is. And if you want to do that, I'm telling you, He will. He will absolutely come to you, visit you with it, explain it to you, show you in the Word. He'll give you situations where you can practice that love walk. Wow, will He do that? That's amazing how he does that. God, I want more of your love. God, I want to walk in your love. God, I want to... Someone cut you off. 
and then flips you the California high sign. You know what I mean? Here's your chance to practice what you just asked God to do, man. That's just one example because everybody drives nuts these days. Not everybody, but some folks. I know mostly no one here drives like that, but it happens. But when you ask God, <laughs> Jesse drives crazy? No, I don't. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Sometimes I just understand you got to get home because you got to go to the bathroom or something. I get it. I know. You're in a hurry. <laughs> but see, we'll do that. God, God, and then all of a sudden, the devil. Will test us, man. He'll, 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 he'll try to pull us over into that. And guess what? You know what? You will get mad. You will say something you didn't want to say. There's times that that happens. There is times. I notice with me when I'm tired physically is when I'm easier to fly off the handle. It's, it's, it's just the truth. I don't know. Maybe you're not like that, but it's the truth for me sometimes. When I'm physically tired, it's like just any little thing can just set me, set me off, you know. But see, there's one, there's, a, there's something about when you do that, and then you go to the Lord and just say, forgive me. Yeah. And then if you need to, go to the people that maybe you exploded on or that you said something to and apologize. Yeah. There's something that that does to your heart. Yeah. It's like you take a step in growth. I mean, one of the wildest things is, is when, when, when God has you call somebody to apologize. Have you ever done that before? Oh, man. That'll test you right there. Do you really want to humble yourself even though you know it wasn't your deal, but it was theirs? They provoked it? But then God's going, call them. God, Seriously? Why? That's the last thing I want to do. But then you know it's right inside. And you say, okay. And you, 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 you humble yourself. You call. You apologize. And it, I've done it before. And the person at the other end was just like, I ain't forgiving you. And I'm like, okay, I just love you. God bless you. <laughs> and then I'm just like, all right, Lord, I did what you told me to do. And, 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 you know, and of course, he helps you grow in that. Amen? <laughs> but I know, this is, I know this sounds kind of wild, and you know, this is kind of, but it's an everyday thing we live in. Just think about it. I mean, it's so easy to get frustrated. Because the things we're seeing on the news, because the things we're seeing in maybe our communities or work, there's something, there's always stuff where there's pressure there for you to just grind and get mad and get angry and just this person and that person and all that. And we all live that story sometimes. We all do. But what I'm saying tonight is keep yourself in check when it comes to your love walk. That's one of the most major things you can do on the earth is keep yourself in check when it comes to your love walk. You feel yourself start to drift, you know, get back over. Stop yourself and just say, no, and if you have to talk to yourself, talk to yourself and just say, I am not going to allow the enemy to deceive me. I'm not going to allow the enemy to pull me over into that trap. I'm not going to allow the enemy to use my mouth to curse. I want God to use my mouth to bless. To bless. So it says here in verse 13, until we all reach oneness in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, growing spiritually to become a mature believer, reaching to the full measure of the fullness of Christ, manifesting his spiritual completeness and exercising our spiritual gifts in unity. Exercising our spiritual gifts in unity. 
You know why God moves so strong in this congregation is because we truly do come in here and we surrender ourselves and we want the Holy Spirit to take control in this place. Because we know that He's the one that gets His orders from the Father God. And the Father God knows exactly what us as individuals, but also as the corporate body, He knows what we need to hear for that moment in time that we're gathered together. It's so different when you're by yourself and you're in your own prayer time. It's different than being here and being in a corporate worship time. It's two different things. God deals with me totally different compared to when I'm with Him just alone in my own private time to when I get into this place. It's different. And for a while there, I thought, man, this is weird, God. Why is it? You know, when I get into here in this corporate thing, it's like words and scriptures and revelation and, and, and things I need to say and just boom, 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 boom. And it's always about the body. But then when I get into my own, it doesn't mean can't talk to you when you're in a corporate setting about your own personal life. He can. He does. He's doing that to me right now. Things I've said have hit me between the eyes, and I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, standing up here. But, but a lot of times when, I'm in, when you're in your personal time, when you're in your, 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 your personal worship time with the Lord, it's different. I've noticed it in my life. When I get before Him in my personal time, it's mostly just me worshiping Him almost the whole time. He will say things. He'll show me things sometimes or whatever. But it's mainly me just worshiping the Lord and loving on Him and allowing Him to love on me. But when when I get in here, it's almost like, I guess because of the office or or the, the calling in my life, when I get in here around the corporate body, I'm like, all these lights are going off. Ding, ding, about certain people and things I need to say and words I need to give and all this kind of stuff because it's a corporate anointing. But here's the awesome thing about that is this, is that when we come together and we have a heart of love for one another, it stirs up God. It stirs up heaven. It stirs up everything that's in the kingdom of heaven, praise God. And whatever God needs to release, He'll release that because we are in the unity in the bond and the peace of Christ. It's important. It's truly important. A lot of times the reason why strong moves of God have fizzled out is because man has got their own ideas and started doing it their own way. And they fizzle. They die out. See, whether we have extended meetings for three weeks straight, whether we have extended meetings for eight months straight, whether we just have Sunday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, uh, for the rest of the time we're here on earth, it doesn't matter to me. I just want God to show up every time we get together and, 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 and worship together. Amen. That's what I want. I want to see people's hearts change. I want to see all of us grow together in the, in the maturity, into the maturity of Christ as, as a believer. I want to see people come in and get healed. I want to see people's lives get changed. I want to see demons leave people that have been holding them in bondage for years, decades, whatever. That's why I'm here doing what I'm doing. And I'm praying and I'm believing God that that's, and I'm, and I'm believing that that's why you're here, belong to this local church, because you're connected here. We grow together. We learn together. We get revelation. We get knowledge. We get wisdom together. And we're able to go out and deliver that into the kingdom of darkness to drive back darkness and to provide light praise God it's like that vision I had in prayer here a few years back I saw I saw this big tent like you know those big revival tent meetings those kind of deals I saw this tent and I was inside this tent and I saw these angels come down I saw the hand of the Lord come down and grab these two tent posts and he picked them up and when he picked them up, he started to stretch those, that, those posts out and started to stretch that tent out, started to take over territory. And as he did, the believers, we were in this, this tent, we were in this, this uh, tent there, this covering there, and when he was stretching this out, it was just overtaking darkness. He was taking ground, and darkness was fleeing because light was coming in on the scene. And I said, Lord, why are you showing me that? He said, because it's time for my body to pick up their tent post and to stretch their cords, to lengthen their cords, and to stretch out and take over the kingdom of darkness and bring the light into territories that are dark. That covering there, that tent there, was the covering of God. It was a covering over his body, and we begin to take over territories. 
Amen. Now, folks, I believe that stuff. I believe that God has put us here in the center of this town for a purpose to take this area of town. There's something about being in the center of town where you, there's just something, there's something spiritual about that. God is into real estate, guys. He is. He's into territories. He's into regions. He's into putting certain people uh, in certain places, sending, you know, taking somebody that used to live here for 30 years, moving them out and sticking them somewhere else because there's a reason for that. Yeah. You know, my, my friend, some of you know him, he's been here and ministered before, David Hunter, he's a, he's a worship guy, he's ministered here. He was telling me that, that he, he never knew he would be over in Belize. He's a Texan kid. He's born in Texas. He lives in Louisiana. And all of a sudden, God opened this door for Belize. And they started uh, uh, ministering to little kids, taking a bunch of dresses over there and giving little girls dresses like, like we were doing there for a while. He started doing that, get shoes, started giving kids shoes, going over there, started training pastors. And all, and all of a sudden, this huge door opened. They're building a house over there right now. And they're getting ready to set up this big old, I don't know if you want to call it a compound, but this big old place where pastors from everywhere, people that are, feel like they're called to ministry, are going to be able to come over to these places, get trained and raised up in the kingdom of God. God to go out and to plant churches and to go into villages where nobody ever goes and be able to start works of the gospel and churches and all this kind of stuff. And it all happened within like just a year. It's like he said, my head was spinning. It was just one of those God things, you know. And uh, so, you know, we might be here right now. Now, I, I know God ain't going to move everybody away. I don't know if he's, I might be in Madeira till either I die or he comes back. I, I, as of right now, that's what I feel like that's what he's going to want me to do. That could change, though. That could change for you. Uh, I'm settled. I ain't going nowhere. What if you have a dream tonight and he wants you to move to Alaska? What are you going to do? Huh? Freeze? Yeah. It's about true. But see, you know, usually, I mean, that's kind of few far in between where God will do something like that. But it could happen. You got to get to the point to where you're willing to do whatever the Lord tells you to do. Because that's how much you love him. That's, that's a sacrifice. Yeah. Present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable and blameless unto the Lord, that you can do the reasonable service what he's called you to do. Amen. And then it goes on to say, and do not be conformed to this world, but, be, but let your mind be renewed. <laughs> Believe me, I'm on that renewal, that mind renewal, man. I'm on it. I'm on that train. I need my mind renewed Amen. in some areas. And I'm willing to get it, and I'm willing to hold on to it. I'm willing to go. I'm willing to do whatever the Lord wants me to do. You know, we were over in Pismo here a couple days ago, and I'm like, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do, Lord. I mean, is there a, is there a, is there a, super, is there a charismaniac church over here, Lord? If there isn't, I'll come pastor it, you know. No, but I'm just kidding. I love Madeira, but you know, I just want to do whatever the Lord wants me to do. But I know... To do whatever the Lord wants me to do, I'm going to have to walk in love. To be the fullness of it. To have the fullness of Christ. Can we have the fullness of Christ? Yes, we can have the fullness of Christ. We can grow in the fullness of Christ every day if we want to. It literally is up to us. He will not force us. It's up to us if we want to grow in the kingdom. See, now, there are times where we'll suffer. We'll go through things. We'll have heartache. Well, I'll struggle. We might go through some sickness. We might have something happen to us or to our family member or something that, was, that isn't fun for a while. And all of us in this place can relate to that, every single one of us, with one of those things I just said. Heck, you might be even dealing with it right now, you know. But the truthness of that is, 
is if you will keep your eyes on the Lord and you will dig in and you'll follow him, you'll search him, you'll seek him, you'll, 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 you'll come to him, you'll petition him, you'll, 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 you'll ask, you'll go before him, you'll worship him, you'll praise him, you'll, you'll let your life be dominated by the Father. Yeah. That situation, those things, they will turn around. God will work those things out for His good. The Bible says God will perfect those things that concern you. He'll bless you. He'll help you. You're you're your worst critic sometimes. All of us deal with that too. We we beat ourselves up sometimes. I I've done that. I knew I I told myself I wasn't going to do that again. I've told myself, I'm getting to the point now where it's like, I realize that my flesh is just stupid. I don't know how else to say it. My flesh is an idiot. It doesn't understand anything. It just wants whatever it wants. It wants to do whatever it wants to do. It wants to eat whatever it wants. It wants to say whatever it wants. It just wants to do whatever. It wants to go totally opposite of the will of the Father. And I just know that. And you know what? There's times I find myself, stupid comes out. <laughs> ignorant comes out. And I, there's a difference between ignorant coming out and just living that way, and a difference between ignorant coming out and stopping ignorant. And that's where a lot, all of us, let's just be honest, we'll, have to, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that the rest of our lives because we're not perfect human beings, but we can grow, stupider can get less stupider, does that make sense, ignorant can get less ignorant as we follow the Lord and as we grow in the Lord, things that you used to react to 10 years ago, you probably, you can grow and not react to those things as you go on in life, you'll see them different, you'll look at it different. You'll respond to it different because you're growing in maturity in the things of the Lord. And a lot of stuff just comes with age. I never, when I was growing up as a kid, I thought, that doesn't even make sense to me. But now, I mean, I'm 42 and and I'll be 43 next month. And so I've learned a few things over the years. And certain things that would affect me when I was 25 years old doesn't affect me now. Mentally, I'm talking about. So, we grow, but the love of the Lord, let that be the dominant thing in your life. Let that dominate you in a good way. Let it just, let it come. I mean, when, when, you, when you start to get, ag- I think a lot of our problems is we'll just turn the news off. Talk to some of you that have done that. You wake up in the morning, oh, you're just feeling so good. Glory to God. Wow, Lord, what a blessing. I hear the birds chirping and so awesome, Lord. I just love you. I feel so good. Thank you for the other day, Lord. Thank you for today, Lord. I just, oh, man, praise God. What in the world? You know, immediately. You get on your phone. You get on your computer. You turn on the TV. You see something that you can't stand that you think is so ignorant, so stupid, doesn't even make sense, and then you start getting thoughts, well, if they come do that to my family, or this, you know, and you start, you get all riled up for 15 minutes, and you're like, wait a minute, what am I doing? I was wanting to sip my coffee and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Now I've pounded my coffee, and I'm angry, you know? Time's gone by. Half an hour's gone by. You woke up wanting to spend time with God, and you sat there and was angry for a half hour, you know? (laughs) Come on, I know we all deal with that sometimes. Maybe not every day, but we do sometimes. So what I'm saying is this. Get your eyes focused on the kingdom. Keep your eyes focused on the kingdom. Keep your eyes focused on your, the, the will that God has for you, and just be that blessing. Release that blessing. Even when you you feel like you're getting robbed or you're not getting treated right, just release the blessing of the Lord. It's hard. You've got to turn your mind off and you've got to look down in here. 
That's where you got to look. There's been people over the years that all of a sudden they're not my friend anymore, and I can't figure out why. You hadn't seen them for a few months, and you run into them at the store or a ball game or, or somewhere around town, and you, excuse me, you haven't seen them in a while, and you're excited. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while, and also you just kind of get the cold shoulder. That's happened to me a lot lately. I don't know why. I don't know why. And it's hurtful sometimes, and it stinks. It's not fun. You obviously see there's something wrong for whatever reason. And most of, and, and probably 100% of the time I ever, ever ask them, what's your problem? I'll, I won't do it. I'll just keep my heart right towards them, and I'll bless them, and I'll love them, and I'll just leave. There's nothing I can do about it. But isn't that hurtful when you, when you know people all of a sudden just turn on you for some, no whatever reason, for, and you haven't even done anything? That's like the worst thing ever. It hurts. But the devil will use that if we're not careful. To get angry, to curse them, to speak against them, to call them names. It could be. People could be saying things behind your back to turn that person on you for whatever reason. And that's usually what it is. But let me say something. We're not in junior high anymore. Right. <laughs> My daughter just got out of junior high. Holy smokes. Wow. Junior high drama. What a that's craziness, man. I guess it's worse for girls. I don't know. I don't I never really paid attention. Guys would just slug it out and then they'd be best friends the next day. You know what I mean? But we shouldn't participate in that kind of stuff. Regardless of what people think or say or do towards us, we love them. Yeah. We love them. Yeah. We just we we have to love. We have to bless. And the thing is, is when we do that, angels and the love of the Lord and the conviction of the Holy Spirit yeah. deal with that person, and that's what you want. Because you want to see them come into the kingdom or you want to see them come back to God or whatever the situation is. That's what you really want. That's what I want for this, this, this situation I'm talking about right now with this person. That's what I want. I want to see them come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ because that's what's going to help them out of their misery that they're in with life, period. I don't know about you, but people that gossip and murmur and complain, they live the miserable lives. Yeah. It's tough. Because they're using their mouth for not praising. Right. I heard Todd Bailey say that one time. When you complain, you'll remain. When you praise, you'll be raised. Yeah. <laughs> so tonight... You know, let me, let me finish these next two verses here. Verse 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what, by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Every joint supply, your supply, what you supply in the body, it's because of you doing your part in love that we can be joined together by the head, which is Christ, and we can fulfill what Christ has called us to fulfill on this earth, and that is to raise the dead, heal the sick, praise God, to cast out devils. That's what God... 
That's what Jesus went to the cross for, not only to save us, but to use us to do what He did as an extension of Him. And He did everything, the main thing He did everything in was love. Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Can you imagine? I mean, that's just almost unthinkable of what he went through. And then he's up there just going, Father, forgive him. And the dude next to him that was a thief and a robber, don't worry, son. You'll be with me in the kingdom of heaven. Forgave him as he called. Jesus is hanging on the cross, just went through brutality that we can't even imagine. They said he, wasn't even, he didn't even look like a man after they got done with him, they say. And he's standing there, and he's having to pastor somebody that's sitting next to him on the other cross, pretty much. A counseling appointment on the cross while he's up there. And he did it because he loved him. We, our country needs a baptism in the love of the Father. It needs a spanking. God's getting ready to give it a spanking. See what's happening, why everyone's freaking is because God's taking over. You know how? Prove it. You know how? Because there's people that are praying. Which releases God, which releases the kingdom, which means it's taking over. A lot of Christians won't even understand what I just said right now. Well, the Bible says the days are going to get worse. It does. You're right. But then there's that one part where it says that the Gentiles are going to see the glory on you, which overtakes the worse. You're light. We're light. It's time to play our part, stay in the will of the Lord, love people, bless people. Just because we love them don't mean we have to agree with them. Just because we love them, if we love them, we'll tell them the truth in love. It's not my job to be Captain Correction, but if they ask me, I'm going to tell them the truth and what the Word of God is based on concerning that. But I still love them. That's, that's what we've got to do. You'll see results. You'll see God moving in people's lives when you love them. But we're, we're joined together by Him. We're knitted together by the love of God. We've all got a part to play. We have all are in this together. Guys, I love you, and I just want to see this region, this, this, this valley, the San Joaquin Valley. And I know there's hundreds upon hundreds of other believers in this valley that are thinking the same thing, hearing the same thing that we're talking about tonight, that are going after it too. And God is bringing people. People are coming in. The harvest is coming. Yeah. Keep looking for it because it's there. Keep letting God show you who to talk to, who to fellowship with, who to, who to bless, who to say something to. Be looking for it because that's how you win the harvest. You don't just wait for them to show up at church someday. Right. You be the church out there and deliver it to them. Some will come, some won't but you, you, you leave the gospel with them. You leave the love of the Lord. Amen? Has anybody in here been having a problem with one of their elbows? Been having pain in an elbow? You have? Really? Which one? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Are you having pain right now? Like, is there a certain thing you can't do? or? Yeah, right, but I mean, still, though. Okay, well, let me, let me just pray for it, okay? Here, bent it like this. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the healing anointing into Priscilla's elbow in Jesus' name. You called it out. You showed me this, Father, to, do, to heal her and to do something, something about it. So in Jesus' name, I command inflammation, if it's there, to go down in Jesus' name. And, Lord, as Priscilla does her work that she's supposed to do, Lord, I thank you, Father God, for peace in her elbow, peace in her shoulder. And we say bursitis will not take hold in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Bible says that He's the name above all names. Hallelujah. 
And that's Jesus. So I thank you right now, Father, for that healing in Jesus' name. I thank you for peace and strength and healing now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, Yeah, that's right. In on that, amen. Well, the Lord, I heard the Lord say elbow earlier during praise and worship. So that's, that's what it was, obviously. I didn't, you know, you know what I mean? So, well, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Let's just lift our hands up for just a moment here and just thank Him. Lord, we thank You. We thank You for what You've done tonight in our lives. We thank You, Father, for what You've said. Our, our, our arms are open. We're in surrender to You, Lord. We say that, that we want Your will, Your plan, Your purpose, not only for our lives, Lord, but for our, our family, for our communities, for our cities, God, for our region, Lord. We want your will to be done, Lord. And Lord, we know that it starts with us as we obey you, Father. And so, Lord, I thank you that if there's anyone in here that's been maybe struggling with this, Lord, or not understanding your love and, and really how much you love us. Lord, I just ask you that those windows of heaven are open, that you pour out your agape love down upon us, God. That you just baptize us with your love, Lord, that we can grow in your love. That we can be a light to a dark world, Lord, that we can be that person that delivers the manifested love of God. We want that to come off us. Like Dad was talking about Catherine Kuhlman earlier, releasing heaven as she spent time in the heavenlies, Lord, in your presence. Lord, we want that to be on our lives, Lord. We want people just to see Jesus in us. We want to bless them. We want them to have help where they struggle, Lord. Thank you for it, Father. So, Lord, I thank you for the baptism of your love in our hearts, God. You've given us that. Let your love, the Bible says your love's been shed abroad in our hearts, Lord. And I thank you that we're led by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Lord. Uh, earlier, the Lord gave me the words, troubled mind. Troubled mind. And you know what Mike was preaching tonight? Um, yeah. Jesus, one of the reasons he didn't get outside of love is because he controlled the spiritual atmosphere around him with the love of God. Mm -hmm. He did not allow the spiritual atmosphere in yeah. his life, in his mind, or his being, or around him to become one of a demonic, demon-infested thing like we read about this morning, if you were here, over in James, where the Bible talks about strife that there's confusion, there's every evil work. He, did, he didn't allow that to happen. Right. Even when people rose up against him, like his own home synagogue rose up against him and wanted to murder him, the reason he was able to walk right through them wasn't because he was Jesus. It was because he stayed in a realm that demons can't comprehend. True. And when those people were motivated by demons, they couldn't find Jesus because he was in a different realm than they were in. Right. And so he controlled what went on. When the, that, you know, when the Father said, my will is for you and the disciples to get in a boat and go to the other side, and a storm, the devil perverted the weather and uh, caused a storm to rise up to stop them, and the disciples got, what, troubled minds. They started off with peaceful minds, going to the next ministry assignment. But then when they saw the circumstances, their minds began to be troubled because of what the devil was doing. And you know the story, how they woke Jesus up, and what did Jesus do? He released peace. Yeah. If you study the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love, and then all the rest of those yeah, things that are mentioned one, yeah. are that which is a fruit or comes out of love. love. God, out of God. Yes. So Jesus stood up, and he would not allow the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere that was affecting the natural atmosphere, he wouldn't allow that to happen. Right. He said, peace. He could have said, I release the love of God into the weather. He could have said it that way. But he spoke to the wind, amen, and, he, and then to the sea, peace, be calm, be still. Because he didn't let his mind go where their mind went. Yeah, he good. didn't let his mind go where the that's disciples' good. minds went. When you start worrying, when you start being full of care, when you see other Christians not act like Christians, now, I know that never happens, right? But 
<laughs> and you start being concerned and, you know, well, I don't know if I want to be around them because of the way they're just you, anything that, that pops up that starts stealing your peace and your joy or questioning your right standing in God, you need to deal with that. Otherwise, you'll have this demonic storm going on in your mind. And I know because I lived in a demonic storm for years. But I've learned that any high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, any thought that you're to cast that down, you're to, you're to shut that storm down, and you do it by understanding God loves you. He loves everything about you. He loves yes. your spirit, your soul, your yes. body. He loves your family. He loves everything. And he, he's going to see to it in love that you get where you need to go and you are what you, you need to be. So you just shut that thing down and you, you cast that down. You command the peace of God to come. And you don't allow the devil to control your mind. If God be for you, who can be against you? The Bible says if we'll Thank set our focus on him, he'll lead us. So there are people in here tonight that... Uh, the enemy has just been tormenting you. That lousy, no good, whatever I want to call him. Mm -hmm. I, almost, I almost said something bad. Egg-sucking dog. Egg-sucking dog. That's what Mitch Key's called. He, he wants to just make you miserable all day long. It's true. And if you let him run around in your mind, create that storm, he will. So tell him to shut his mouth. That he's, he, he's talking to the wrong person. I cast my cares on the Lord. Yeah. He's got it now. He's <clears throat> taking care of it. So if you want to talk about that, you need to go talk to him. I'm not going to let you talk to me about it anymore. Yeah. So, Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We don't just pray. We say Thank right you. now yeah. in the name of Jesus. Say it with our mouth. Every foul spirit that's hindering people's yes, minds in this yes. place, in Jesus' name, you go from them right now. Jesus, I command you to leave them. I command the angels of God to go and minister right now. Yes, yes. And I thank you, Father, that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of peace and love, Lord, help people see that you love them so much. You've got them covered. You've got it handled. It's yes. going to come out right. Thank you, Lord. Doesn't matter whether people like them or don't like them or what people say or even our own opinions don't count. Right. They're not in line with yours. Yeah. So we just worship you and we receive yes. your you, peace. Lord. Hallelujah. We receive your yes. peace. Thank you. I prophesy to you tonight peace. that if you do what the Bible says and you say, Lord, I give this to you, I cast my cares on you because you care for me. Yeah. And you, cannot, you not only care for me, you're going to handle it. Yep. I say in Jesus', Jesus name, I prophesy name. to you tonight, Jesus your future's name. coming out right. Yes. The things that the enemies tried to fill you with fear over, he's lying. Yes. It's right. going to come out the way God says it's right. going to come out because it's in God's hands. Right. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, let's stand. Hallelujah. You know, next Sunday, uh, Jesse and Amy Shamp's going to be with us next Sunday morning and Sunday night. And uh, they're excited to be with us. And, and uh, I just ask, just to, they move in a healing anointing and a prophetic anointing. And, and uh, I just ask to start, think about somebody this week that you, you can ask to come that's looking for healing or maybe just they're struggling in life. Just... Tell them to come on to church, and the Lord wants to heal them and help them and bring them. Amen. Just bring them, amen. They're, they're coming out here excited about what the Lord's doing in this area and hooking up with, with what's going on out here with us and all that, and they'll be here next Sunday. So just, just invite people. We got the next, up until the end of the year, we've got a lot of ministers coming in to here. It just seemed like God worked it out that way, and I know there's something to it. I just can't, I don't, I can't put my finger on it fully, but... I know there's something to it prophetically where God's going to do something here before the end of the year is up, and we got some very some some people that are that are that are. Um, I'll say it this way: they're the real deal, and they're doing it for the right reasons. Their ministry, what they do, and uh, I'm telling you, I just feel like there's going to be just an outbreak of some stuff stuff take place here before the for, before the end of the year, and uh, so I just ask you to, to keep those meetings in prayer. Uh, and just, just bring people, though. Ask them to come. That's why we bring people in. They're here to edify us and help us, but also to, to, to bring these different gifts in we bring for people so they can receive healing and things like that in their life. Amen? Amen. Lord, I speak the blessing of God over every person in this place. I ask you, Lord, for the folks that have watched online tonight, Lord, just to bless them and help them and, and the peace of God to flood their homes and families. 
And Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name that you give us divine appointments this week, Lord. Give us God appointments. Bring people across our path that we can release the love of the Lord to, Father. In word, in deed, however you want us to do it, Lord, we're open to it, Holy Spirit. And I speak the blessing of God in Jesus' name over us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.